Hey guys, it's Zach from My Shire Farm, and today, today we're going to talk about how do I get rid of all my males. Uh, I get that question quite a bit. Um, you know, I'm hatching out and I'm selling the chicks and I'm selling the hens and I'm selling the eggs, but I have too many males. My freezer's full. I don't know what to do. Uh, so I get that quite a bit. So today uh, we're going to talk about how to sell uh, your males. Um, and that seems to be the biggest struggle with people starting out trying to make a business on Caternix Quail. So before I begin, make sure you go to our YouTube channel, My Shire Farm. Like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Uh, but jumping into it, males. you got to be creative. Like I said in the last video about profiting from quail, um, males are going to be your hardest part to sell. They do not sell themselves you have to go and find the business. So there's many different things you can do. In Ohio, to sell to a business, you have to be USDA. To be USDA, you have to go through all these hoops, and then you have to spend all this money, and then you have to have someone here. It's just not worth it for us. Um, it's not profitable at all in Ohio that we found. <clears throat> so we don't sell to, to businesses. Um, we do sell to local people. Uh, we do farm pickups for butchered quail and things like that. Uh, and luckily, we do have some accounts that, um, that take care of that. But when we started, we were hatching out all these eggs because we ship live quail. Well, at three, four weeks old, you can feather sex a lot of our colors. So then all these people went at the hens, which was fine. I get that. So we would sell them the hens, and then all of a sudden we turn around and we go, uh, we have 300 males. What are we going to do? And so, from what I hear from you guys, uh, it sounds like you guys are starting to have the same problem. So this is what we did. Um, we got creative. So we looked into reptiles. That is one thing you want to do. Start going to reptile shows. Get your name out there. Sell the benefits of quail and how it's healthy. Um, so when we were selling to reptile people, uh, we were selling it as, well, our quail is, they're raised for human consumption. So these are healthy quail. These are non-GMO, um, you know, full-grown, non-medicated feed, you know, grown at our farm. You can come check us out kind of thing. Take care of your reptile. Uh, so we did it that way. Um, then we were lucky enough to get in contact with a wildlife reserve, and they bought a lot. So check with your local wildlife. Um, check with things like that. You can also look into zoos. I know someone that sells to a lot of zoos. Um, we have not looked into that, so I don't know a lot about it, but I do know for a fact that someone has huge success with that. Um, and I know that when we were selling to the wildlife reserve, um, you know, it was lions and tigers and bears, oh my! that they were selling or feeding these quail to. Uh, so you can do that. Um, another thing that we did that we got creative with was um, we had a butcher class. You know, once a month, once every two months, when we ever, whenever we like needed to get rid of these males and needed something to do with them and our freezer was full, we decided to have a butcher class. So what that did was people that were willing to come here, local, uh, would spend $20 for an hour lesson. You know, we would all be around the same area and butcher together, and then they would be able to take home four of the quail that they butchered. Um, families were all as one, you know, unless they wanted to do it separately. Uh, so we had some husbands and wives that wanted to do it separate, and then we had some people that wanted to do it together, plus their two kids, and then we had some that you know, they wanted their older, you know, son or daughter to do it. And then the younger ones just went to go play because they weren't old enough or whatever. Um, but we got to meet a lot of cool people. We got to uh, see a lot of cool different experiences uh, with things like that. And, uh, and it got our name out there. Um, so that's something that you can do. And I'm not saying you have to do that, but you could do something like that. Uh, and then... Um, and the last example I can give you would be dog training. 
So in Ohio, it's very hard to raise bobwhite quail for many different reasons. The laws are just, it's not impossible, it's just more difficult. Um, so we don't have a huge influx of bobwhite quail around here. Well, we do have a huge influx of dog training and dog shows and things like that here. Uh, so we were lucky enough to get our name out there enough for someone to contact us. And um, he comes, if not every week, every other week at least, uh, and buys and, you know, they do dog training, they do, you know, for the shows, they do with this, they do with that, and that takes care of a lot of our males. Uh, so I would look into dog training and, and things like that. And then the last one uh, that we've done, and the last one that we looked into, and uh, we've done it in the past a couple of times where it's been really big bulk orders, but it's been inconsistent. Well, now it is consistent, and that is falconers. That's the other way that you can sell your males. Um, and, uh, and so falconers, so birds of prey owners, love to have Caternix quail. They're great feeders, and everybody's got to eat. So if you hate listening to this, I'm sorry, uh, but we butcher the quail and we eat them because that's what we raise them for. Um, well, birds of prey and reptiles and things like that, they got to eat too, and why not eat healthy? Why not eat Caternix quail like we would eat it, right? Um, so, birds of prey, uh, and I'm not too familiar with it. I mean, I've talked to him every time he comes, and he comes, I don't know, once a quarter maybe, and buys a ton. Uh, and then, the, you know, after the quarter, he calls me again and says, okay, we need another order. Uh, but we were lucky enough that he contacted us, and he is either in charge or semi-in charge of the Ohio... Um, Falconry Association. So we're very blessed with that. Um, and thank you for your business if you're watching. Uh, but that is mainly how we get rid of all of our males. So those are just some examples of how you can get rid of them. Um, the hens, the chicks, the day olds, you know, you just got to have good quality, good quality service. Um, and you have to be willing to, to meet people. You know, you've got to be willing to, to put your name out there. Um, you know, do a giveaway or do, you know, a sponsorship to one of your local uh, places that, that's doing something. You know, s support your local softball team or whatever. Uh, and just get your name out there and explain the benefits of it. And eventually it works out. Uh, Craigslist is a great thing to do. Um, and things like that. And restaurants, if they find out that you have quail eggs, you're in because restaurants love quail eggs. They just are scarce. Uh, so those are, I don't want to say easy, but doable. Uh, the males, no one really talks about, and those that's the hardest part. So I hope that helps. Uh, let me know what you think, and uh, stay tuned because i got more coming your way. Thanks, guys.